Hello, my name is Miss Sen Fontaine. I'm executive director for Design Art Seminars. In early February, I was able to catch up with Fred Jackson to talk about the 2018 Kitchen and Bath industry show he attended in Orlando in January. For those not familiar with the show, I first asked Fred to tell us a little bit about it. Here is Fred. And this show is primarily products that focus on uh, kitchen and bath, remodeling, new construction. Uh, it covers appliances. It covers plumbing fixtures. It covers fix finishes. And it covers uh, uh, a lot of facets of the segment, sub-segment of construction that goes commercial or residential for the kitchen and bath industry. Wow. So anything kitchen and bath, you can find it there. So that's a wide range of uh, of products once again. Uh, was there one product at the last show uh, that stood out for you? This show is always, to me, a feast for the eyes because it, it tends to be where I learn the most about design because the, um, the booths are the best of most shows that I, I go to because they consistently outdo each other. Uh, for new products across the globe in the kitchen and bath. And this segment is where I learned the most about marketing trends and color tips, uh, more so than many other shows. And so uh, in this, uh, I, I saw a couple of features that are beginning to impact us. First of all, European companies are uh, definitely in the appliance part and definitely in the upper end appliances seem to be uh, coming over here more and more. And that, of course, gives us more, the consumer more choices. So that that's a big picture thing. But there was a subset, uh, some products I'm watching in a segment called Centered Stone and companies like Neolith and Lapitec and uh, Decton seem to be pushing the envelope and in many ways, a higher focus than traditional countertops like Caesar Stone, um, Seal Stone, and others. And so these new textures, and there seems to be, for the second year in the row, uh, a, um, a, um, a uh, thought process with this material is beginning to uh, grab hold to the imagination of the design community and the, build, and the uh, kitchen and bam about the, the uh, durability and the simplicity of the product. So uh, Neolith and Lapitec and Decton would be the group that seems to be, there seemed to be a lot of activity around what their product was and what Centered Stone does. And these colors are beautiful colors. The depth is, uh, um, uh, is in, in, inherent in the product, but more importantly, it's easy to maintain. So it's kind of answering a question, giving uh, uh, consumers whether commercial or residential options that maybe they didn't have before. Well, that sounds fantastic. Sounds like it's going to give design professionals a new set of uh, items to, to work with and let their imagination and creativity go with it. So that's right. pretty exciting. Now, those shows always have unexpected products. Was there one there that, that, that stood out for you at the Kitchen and Bath industry show? Uh, you know, the uh, the booths, uh, Delta and Kohler, seem to always be a hub of, of activity. But what was interesting is the seeing that, uh, once again, uh, the the, uh, pl the uh, bathroom, uh, plumbing fixtures, uh, we see textures like bronze coming back where it has been chrome or stainless steel. We're beginning to see a cross-section of uh, appliance um, uh, plumbing fixtures that are uh, contemporary, but more uh, transitional also. And this new term of transitional is a mixture of contemporary with traditional features. So it's, you're seeing that in the uh, fixtures, we're seeing that in the plumbing fixtures, the shower fixtures. Uh, contemporary still is very strong, but we're seeing a crossover segment coming in. And especially in Kohler and Delta, you seem to see that uh, uh, in there a lot. All right, so we're getting to a blend, like maybe a little move back towards more traditional features, but yet hanging on to the contemporary aspect of it. Is that what I'm hearing? That That's that. exactly it. It seems to be still contemporary, but we're seeing uh, reaching back into some textures that we don't think of, you know, like bronze. We don't think of that right. as a contemporary, but we're beginning to see when it's done with tradition, with uh, contemporary features or straight lines, it's, it crosses over into a broader market. Great. 
no, any particular insight that you gain from attending that trade show, anything you learn, any any takeaway you'd like to share? Well, you know, from my vantage point, I was curious to see uh, if there would be more products that might be uh, universal design. And since I've uh, focused uh, a lot of my uh, research on this segment, and I ran across a new uh, group called Certified uh, Living in Place, and they actually worked in the Toto booth and the Moen booth, and then there were multiple seminars throughout the day for the kitchen and bath segments. And so this uh, seems to be a growing uh, segment, and uh, it seems to also encapsulate what living in place is, not just aging, but that it crosses multiple generations. And this certification is reaching out to kitchen and bath professionals to help them execute a uh, a much uh, uh, holistic, a broader design and making universal design more mainstream rather than the fringes since the, the, the that segment has been underserved and as the graying of the community. So this organization seemed to be uh, gaining momentum and there were, uh, that was an, a, a new takeaway. Uh, one of the other things that I saw was uh, traditional items that have been commercial. I, example, I ran across a company called uh, Residential Elevators. Well, you think of elevators being in the commercial side, but actually one of the segments, which is uh, talking to the uh, sales manager, was interesting is, you know, people, because there's multi-generational homes and because of uh, uh, ailments and uh injuries and all of the above, universal design, they are very busy putting elevators within residential homes, which, you know, for me, that was a, uh, wow, I hadn't thought about that. So it, it's just fascinating to see how uh, universal design begins to mature. And there are segments that we hadn't thought about being delivered at shows like Kitchen and Bath. Right. And that tells you quite a bit also, I think, about um, how much more Focus in that we're going to have to have on the aesthetic of those solutions because, at least in my experience, when you looked at very free design solutions or universal design solutions, they were usually not the most attractive. So, having those features become more mainstream will definitely probably force the manufacturers to do a better job of making those solutions look a lot more um, enticing. Is, is that something that you saw there? Or, oh, definitely or, saw or, that. And it was definitely interesting that in each one of the booths, the, especially the focus booth, they all had a segment or, or, or a display showing more universal design and how it bridges into the, the built environment and how it should be a part of our thought process. So it's not right. you know a secondary thing. It is definitely now becoming more a, a movement toward this. Yeah, that's fantastic because definitely all of us can benefit from those features at, at some point in our lives. That's that's definitely very true. Now, what advice would you, would you give someone attending KB for the first time? Well, this show is also very large, um, and the large booths, and there are focus booths, some companies that have been in the show for, for decades, and they, they're very large. Uh, i I find that for this show, I need to, you need to start at the smaller booths before you get sucked into the bigger booths because you, they're like almost like Disneyland where there's just too much going on and they don't get you out of there. And they're designed that way, so you don't spend time with their competitors. So uh, I su suggest you find the smaller booths first and then go back to the bigger booths, which are engaging, they're uh, high energy, but they sometimes can take up an overwhelming amount of your time. So the, there's a lot of little, uh, 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 like 10 by 20 booths and 20 by 20 booths that are just absolute gold mines if you go to the Kitchen and Bath show in that aspect and then you know, go back to the bigger uh, mainstays in both the cabinet, the plumbing, the appliances. And uh, uh, one of the other things that it was interesting that Kitchen and Bath has uh, figured out that the cooking aspect of it is uh, engaging. So almost, oh, I'd say the mass majority of the activity was around a cooking area, watching a chef or a uh, preparation going on using the utensils that were shown in the the booth. So once again, the practical application. But once again, it's showing the engagement different rather than just viewing a video. 
yeah, that's that's great. I mean, you know, cooking demonstrations always <laughs> always attract the crowd, so that yep. that's a great way for them to do that. Um, now, finally, if, if somebody uh, listening to this uh, wants to reach out to you about the work you do, about any questions related to Town and Stone, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Our webpage, which is studiogroup.net, and then the uh, info at estudiogroup.net or our 800, which is 800 784 Well, thank you so very much, Fred, uh, for taking the time to uh, tell us about the, the show. Greatly appreciate you taking the time and uh, sharing your insights with us. So that is uh, fantastic. Thank you so very much. Thank you.